Um, and sometimes we discuss and debate whether or not there is a historical truth to religion. In other words, did any of this stuff ever happen? Was a redeemer ever sent to us? Uh, if so, was his mother a virgin? Um, if so, was she immaculately conceived? If so, what took so long? Um, questions of this kind that are not at, at all without their importance and their validity. And sometimes we discuss what you might call the metaphysical uh, truth of it. Is, is there redemption to be had in this way? Yes, but if that one, if that one there had made the right propitiations, had gone to the right prayer meetings, had made the right offertories, had sworn to the, the right uh, oaths, that one would have eternal life and the others would not. And see if you can make yourself believe any of that for a second. That would be a very good debate. Does this stuff, even if it's all made up, even if it's all entirely man invented, does it at least make people behave better? It may not be true. It may indeed be completely false. It may be fabricated. But does it have a moral effect? Does it make people treat each other more kindly? So we look around today's world, and I've got now not very many, many minutes left, and I'll tell you why. I don't think there's any evidence at all, at all, to make us believe that true or false religion is better in times of crisis, war, terrorism, famine, and so forth. And I'll start self-critically, if I may. Um, there was a time when, as a, sec a secularist, atheist, socialist, I was not a close friend, but a bit of a friend of Robert Mugabe. He was then the leader of a guerrilla movement in what was then southern Rhodesia, a, a British-ruled white settler colony in South Central Africa, had been part of the Central African Federation. He was trying to lead a, a movement to overthrow white settler colonial rule. I was somewhat on his side. I used to go and interview him. I would introduce him to other journalists. I would write articles that I somewhat blush to remember now uh, in his favor. Um, and I know why I was doing it. I know what I was doing. But you can pr perhaps picture, having read the papers recently, the embarrassment I would now be feeling at having recommended this guy. And I was looking at the, uh, the records and the reports from Zimbabwe, as it's now called. Uh, have been doing this all year. I feel I'm obliged to do it. I've, I've been back a few times, too, and seeing how absolutely hellish he's made the life of his people. And I was looking at... Um, the record of the Bishop of Bulawayo, the second city of Zimbabwe after Harare, uh, the Catholic Bishop, Pius and Kube, who had made a very brave stand against Robert Mugabe, um, who is, as you know, himself a very believing Catholic and who has twice been allowed into Europe in spite of the European Union's ban on his presence on European soil because the Vatican keeps on inviting and allowing Robert Mugabe to come to to Western Europe in, in spite of the obviously insanitary consequences of his being allowed out of his cage. And um, Pius and Kube, the, the, the Roman Catholic Bishop of Bulawayo, having made a very brave moral and physical resistance to this ghastly dictatorship, was recently framed up in an affair with his housekeeper. I, by, by saying he was framed up, I don't mean to say he wasn't having an affair with his housekeeper. Some of you may be relieved to know that his housekeeper was female. It's nice to have a heterosexual scandal in the Roman Catholic Church every now and then. Uh, and I dare say he didn't have to be tempted all that much. I mean to say the frame-up was the videoing of it by Robert Mugabe's secret police, the transmission of this on primetime on Zimbabwe TV, the, the, the ghastliness of the way in which this setup was, was conducted. And um, Pius and Kube goes. The Vatican says that's it. You're no longer the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Bulawayo. You have to go. You've gone too far. Robert Mugabe, the communicant, the, the daily uh, Catholic communicant who thanks God for his electoral victory, has not been forbidden the sacraments, hasn't been excommunicated, hasn't. No. Now, Pius and Kube, the Bishop of Bulawayo, had an affair with his housekeeper. Robert Mugabe has subjected his entire country to torture, famine, theft, expropriation, death, uh, death squads, and the rest. But the, it seems to me there's nothing he can do to get himself outside the church. He'd probably have to recommend 
condoms or abortions at the rate he's going. Before anything would be said about him, any condemnation would be thundered from the pulpit. Now, I ask you, what does this make one conclude about whether or not religion, in its organized or informal shape, has the propensity to make people behave better or otherwise? And you will notice, I hope, that I've picked as my counterexample a Catholic bishop, um, and I've picked as my first example uh, someone who, when I first knew him, I believed to be a secularist. So I hope I, you won't think I've picked a soft or easy target. Let me move on a little, uh, just since we're doing a, a tour d'horizon of our troubled uh, globe at present. The, 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 the recent recrudescence of something very sinister and very menacing, uh, that is to say despotism of the old form in Russia, one party rule, KGB rules, KGB standards for the treatment of dissent, for the treatment of the press, for the treatment of opposition politicians, for the treatment of neighboring countries as far distant as Georgia and Chechnya and Latvia and Lithuania, the, 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 the return, in other words, of what used to be called great Russian chauvinism under, under Putin and Medvedev is accompanied by something that was always the accompaniment of great Russian Tsarist tyranny and, by the way, Stalinist tyranny before. Over the shoulder of the dictator stands, every time you see it, the black cowled figure of the Russian Orthodox bishop, claiming, as they do now and as they're freely granted by by Putin and Medvedev, exclusive right to be the state church. No other Christian church is allowed even to recruit or proselytize in, in Russia, let alone the, uh, a, a, a Jewish or Islamic force. Not allowed at all. The, 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 uh, when Medvedev takes his oath of office as president, he takes it with an archbishop holding an icon up for him to kiss. Uh, you may remember that in the very strong field of stupid remarks made by President Bush, Probably the stupidest, this is a very competitive uh, selection, was his meeting with, uh, with the Vladimir Putin where he said, as soon as he saw that he was wearing his grandmother's crucifix, he could look into his eyes and know that he was a sincere and decent man. Doesn't anyone here feel a moan of shame that any American president could make such a statement and be so uncritically received for it because to use the word faith is always to use the word as if it was a positive and see what we've helped to baptize in Russia now, uh, another form of czarism, anti-Semitism, chauvinism, police dictatorship, with baptizing it. And it, it, it's, it's impossible to imagine uh, this new form of Russian tyranny uh, without this, uh, this, this Christian uh, uh, carapace uh, overlaid upon it. Um, need I add to an audience as well-versed in current affairs as this one, that a nightmare that has been obsessing all thinking people for many decades now is about to be upon us. We've all worried and wondered when it would occur. When will it happen that a messianic regime or gang or group will manage to get hold of apocalyptic weaponry? When will the two curves intersect? When will those who think that the end of the world is coming get weaponry that can make that happen. Well, it is about to happen in Iran, in Persia. You can wave all you like, darling, I can't see it. How many minutes is that? One. One. Um, <laughs> I, barely, I barely got my trousers off and she's already uh, calling time. Um, well, let me not then adumbrate too much, but it's, it's going to happen. It's, it has, in fact, almost certainly already occurred. The parties of God intend to confront us with the idea of how we'll feel when we have to live at their pleasure. When we in the United States and our friends and allies in Western and Eastern and Central Europe and Lebanon and the Sunni Arab Gulf and also will have to wonder all the time what is the pleasure? What is the pleasure of the Iranian theocracy now that it has thermonuclear weapons and the means to deliver them. We will have to factor their desires into our arrangements. We will have to know what it's like to live at their pleasure. And I think if I phrase it like that, I won't need to uh, unsheath from their quiver uh, the rest of my examples. That is why I say in my book, and that's why I say in all my, that the origins of totalitarianism are theocratic. 
that the original totalitarian temptation, the original totalitarian proposition is that we can refer all our difficulties, all our wishes, all our desires, all our hopes, all our dreads and fears to an unalterable dictatorship, a celestial North Korea in the sky uh, that supervises us from dawn till dusk, that, that subjects us to constant surveillance while we're asleep, before we are born, after we are dead, and that not until we can get rid of this diseased desire for dictatorship, this hatred of our own freedom, this wish for tyranny in our own heads, do we stand the smallest chance of emancipating ourselves, our children, our allies, our friends, our comrades, and our descendants from the, the horror, the hell of dictatorship and mass murder in the here and now. I rest my case. Thank you.